Welcome back to the Astro Park, everyone. My name is Kwesi Aqua, and I've been doing astrophotography for almost four years now, come this June. And it has been a remarkable and incredible experience. So I wanted to do this video to basically talk about some of the things that I've learned on my astrophotography journey thus far, as well as talk about some of the plans that I have for the future of this channel. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. One of the things I did before starting astrophotography was learning the night sky. Knowing where objects are located in the sky, such as the named stars and the constellations, has been quite useful, especially when locating moving objects, such as comets, where I have to use the star hopping technique. And for me personally, it has given me a deeper appreciation for the universe. Now with things such as automation and go-to functionality, it's made locating objects in the sky a lot easier, and I do use those techniques. However, in the event where automation isn't working properly, then I have to take some manual intervention and point the telescope to where I need it to be. So learning the night sky in that regard has been a tremendous help for me. This next point might sound a bit silly, but don't be afraid of the dark. Astrophotography, after all, is a outdoor hobby. So you're going to be outside alone in the dark whether if it's in your own backyard, in the middle of the park, in my instance, or even out in an open field. So for me personally, my first few imaging sessions were a bit unwieldy, but after doing it for a while over the course of years, I was beginning to feel a sense of peacefulness and tranquility in the outdoors because it's just me, my telescope, and the vast night sky just waiting to be explored. Now, I don't know about all of you, but for me, since I'm out in the middle of the park alone with my equipment, I do sometimes tend to talk to myself from time to time, because who else is going to listen, right? But personally, I do sometimes use my imaging sessions as a moment of personal reflection, because we can all be weighed down by the troubles and circumstances that all of us go through in our everyday lives. So during my imaging sessions, I do take a moment of reflection to basically think about my place in the universe. And I'm reminded that regardless of whatever troubles and circumstances that I'm currently going through, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really that big of a deal because I know that no matter what happens, everything is gonna be okay. So it can be quite therapeutic in that regard. Now, also while you're out in the alone in the dark, you may hear some things that go bump in the night. So you want to try your best to not provoke any wildlife in your area. So for me, since I'm in the middle of the park in my neighborhood, I do see the occasional stray cat, but I've also seen some possums, raccoons, foxes, and the largest thing I've seen are giant herds of deer. 
Now, depending on your location, you may see some more exotic wildlife. So you want to try your best to maintain your safety as your top priority. Because although astrophotography is a fun experience, you also want to have a safe experience as well. Another lesson that I learned is to future-proof your purchases. Astrophotography, just like any hobby, can get very expensive very quickly, as we're usually trying to buy the best products possible given our current budget. However, you don't want to fall into the trap of what's referred to as GAS, which is an acronym, G-A-S, or Gear Acquisition Syndrome, where you're trying to buy the latest and greatest products whenever they become available. Because the key is to basically start with whatever it is that you have currently, and then make incremental upgrades as you progress through the hobby, whenever your budget allows for it. So I'll give you a personal example of a mistake that I made when it comes to purchases. In astrophotography, they say that your biggest investment is going to be into your mount because the mount is the foundation that holds all of your expensive telescope equipment on top. So you want to buy a mount that's rigid and sturdy. So given my current budget at the time, I had the option of going with one of two mounts. I had either the Orion Sirius mount, which is the Skywatcher HEQ5, or the Orion Atlas Pro, or the Skywatcher AZ-EQ6. Now, unbeknownst to me, I learned that when it comes to the mount, you want to purchase a mount that has the next weight class higher than what it is that you think that you need. And that gives you a little bit of wiggle room to grow into as you progress through the hobby and buy heavier telescopes. But at the time, the Atlas Pro was a little bit too heavy for me, so I decided to go with the Orion Sirius mount. And it was a great mount. I had no issues with it whatsoever. It performed basically flawlessly, and I got some great images with it. But as I progressed through the hobby, I got aperture fever, and I wanted to buy some larger, wider telescopes. So when I bought my Celestron Edge HD 9.25 Schmidt Cassegrain. With that telescope fully stocked with all the accessories, unfortunately, it exceeded the weight class of the Orion Cirrus mount. So I decided to sell the mount back and then I bought the Orion Atlas Pro, which I've been using ever since. So it just goes to show that I should have bought the Atlas Pro from the get-go instead of buying the Cirrus mount, selling it back, and then buying the Atlas Pro. Because as the old saying goes, buy it nice or buy it twice. So the moral of the story is you basically want to future-proof all of your purchases because Astrophotography equipment is built to last, and if you take excellent care of it, it can last you basically your entire lifetime. So you want to buy products that you can grow into instead of something that you grow out of. Make astrophotography work for you. One of the things I love about astrophotography is its creativity, as each person has their own unique style of doing things in this hobby. However, if you're an absolute beginner, then 
I can understand your confusion and frustrations in certain aspects of this hobby. Whether if it's setting up your gear properly, image acquisition workflows, post-processing workflows, and everything else in between. So you scour the internet for various resources on the subject and a hundred different sources will tell you a hundred different things and then it becomes even more confusing. So when it comes to astrophotography, there is a vast plethora of resources online, whether if it's online articles, online forums such as Cloudy Nights, as well as the vast growing number of astrophotography YouTube channels from people that I personally admire and respect. However, when it comes to receiving the information from these sources, myself included, try not to see them as set in stone, ironclad rules, but instead see them as guidelines that you can personally adjust for your current situation. So in my opinion, there's no right way or wrong way to do astrophotography as there's a vast plethora of tools that you can use. So it doesn't really matter what avenue you go down through, whether if it's using a one shot color camera or a monochrome camera, using plate solving or a hand controller for a star alignment procedure, or using an onboard mini PC versus a laptop with your favorite image acquisition software such as APT, Nina, or Sequence Generator Pro. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, they're all accomplishing the same objective to take amazing pictures of our beautiful night sky. Now, are some tools easier and more intuitive to use? Absolutely. But if you already have an established workflow that works pretty well for you, then don't feel bullied or pressured to change things just because something new came up recently. Only make changes when you deem that it's necessary to. So the way I do astrophotography on this channel, it's not the right way and it's not the wrong way. It's simply my way. And if you're an absolute beginner and you don't know where to start, then feel free to use the information that I provide on this channel. And if it works for you, that's great. But if it doesn't work for you, that's great too. Feel free to modify it in such a way to where it meets your personal requirements. Because at the end of the day, this is your astrophotography journey and you want to make this hobby work for you and not the other way around. And this is a hobby, so always remember to have fun and go at your own pace. Astrophotography is an incredible hobby that can last your entire lifetime. But I get it, it can be a bit technical as there's various terms and information being thrown at you at all angles and it can cause your brain to feel a bit scrambled, kind of like this Rubik's Cube. But perhaps you take my advice and begin by doing the basics, by learning the night sky and establishing your foundation. After you've done that, you then begin by taking some photos of the night sky with a DSLR camera. Once you gain some experience, you then upgrade to using a small 
Apochromatic chromatic refractor telescope. You may also learn some new techniques in your image editing workflow. Or you may even try solar system astrophotography. If you just keep moving forward and making small incremental changes along the way, everything will eventually fall into place. I was pretty hesitant in starting this YouTube channel almost three years ago, as there were other astrophotography channels I was watching at the time, and I felt like I couldn't really add anything that has already been said. However, after reaching almost 4,000 subscribers and over 100,000 total views, it seemed like people were interested in what I had to say, and I am extremely grateful for your support. So I wanted to take a moment to do a quick channel update. As most of you have already noticed, I tend to do monthly uploads for my long form content. And this is because of two limiting factors that I have. The limited amount of clear skies to do imaging session videos, as well as my full-time work as a NASA engineer. So I tend to focus more on the quality of my releases as opposed to the quantity. And it helps prevent me from burning out as well. So although it can change in the future, I would like to keep this cadence of doing monthly uploads for my long form videos. And if I can get additional videos out in that particular month, I'll call that some extra credit. But at the very least, you should expect one long form video from me every month. And if for whatever reason, I can't get a video out in that particular month, then I'll make an announcement in the community tab. I'm also doing some research and potentially adding short form videos to my upload schedule as well. I have heard some conflicting things about doing YouTube shorts, so it's still something I'm doing research in, but it is also something that I'm considering doing in the future as well. Now, one thing that I ask if you're able to if you'd like to help me further, then feel free to share my videos with anyone who may benefit from its material. Because it's word of mouth referrals from all of you that can help make this channel and community grow. I do not speak in hyperbole when I say that all of this could not have been possible without your help and support. And I am extremely grateful. So truly, thank you. So those have been all of the things that I've learned thus far on my astrophotography journey. What are some of the things you've learned on your journey? Let me know about it in the comment section down below. And let's help each other continue to grow in this amazing hobby together. As always, thank you for watching Astro Park. And until next time, take care. And I wish you all clear skies. <laughs>